All right, in section 17.6, we're going to learn about a topic called surface integrals. And I'll warn you up top that this is a pretty long section um, because we have to set up a lot of things. So um, the idea of a surface integral is kind of like a line integral. So a line integral, we have a curve or a line um, C, and we have a function that's defined on this curve along this parameterization. And we want to add this function up. Maybe it's the density of a wire, and we're adding up all the densities, and it's giving us the total mass of the wire. Okay. Well, a surface integral just takes that to a different level. Instead of looking at just a line or a curve through space, we look at a surface. And the same idea, we have this function defined on the surface. And again, maybe it's giving us the density at any given point on the surface. And we'd add it all up and they give us the mass of a surface rather than just the mass of a line or a wire. Okay. All right. So in order to do these, um, if you recall, to do line integrals, we need to parameterize that line or that curve. So the first thing we need to work on is parameterizing a surface. Okay. So let's just remind ourselves what is a parameterization. Um, so a parameterization <coughs> is where we tell you at any given time where you are in space, those, if you connect all those dots together, it creates a surface. Um, so I have examples of two parametric curves here. R of t, where t was your parameter, is equal to cosine t, sine t. Remember, that makes you spin around in a circle. And then z is equal to t makes you start to rise up as t increases. And that spins you around in a circle, but rising up, it creates a helical shape. Okay. Um, you actually saw parameterizations way back in chapter 13. Uh, the very first place was the parametric form of a line. So here we have a line that starts at the point 1, 0, 1, and moves in the direction of those vector attached to t, so 3, 2, negative 5, oops, t. Okay, so that's just a parametric form of a line. Okay, now you'll notice. Um, lines or really they could be curves like the helix are really like one dimensional when you look at them you could uh you could draw them out with just a string okay like you can draw a helix in the air with a string or a piece of wire okay and these things have one parameter if we add a second parameter that will allow us to move kind of in a second dimension and that gives us a parametric surface Okay, so parametric surfaces are going to have two parameters. Rather than just a T, it might have a T and an S, or as I'm going to start off with a U and a V. Okay, um, the variable of the parameter really doesn't matter. Okay, you could use U's, V's, S's, T's. You could use X's and Y's if you really wanted to. Okay, so I tell you, um, according to that parameter, I give you a function for the x coordinate, I give you a function according to the y coordinate, and a function of u and v in the z coordinate. This is going to give us a parametric surface. Okay, so um, we have some examples of these uh, from the previous chapter, actually, yeah, chapter 16 on uh, cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Those things naturally have two nice parameters. Okay, so for example, this first surface that I have here, r of phi theta, is equal to 2 sine of phi cosine of theta, 2 sine of phi sine of theta, 2 cosine of phi, where theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and phi goes from 0 to pi. Now, this looks really complicated, but remember, spherical coordinates has a formula x is equal to rho sine of phi cosine of theta, y is equal to rho sine of phi sine of theta and z is equal to rho um, cosine of phi okay so you see that i'm basically just using spherical coordinates here and i'm fixing in rho is equal to two so this is just a sphere of radius two okay um, second one, r of theta z. Okay, so r of theta z, I'm going to say that x is equal to 3 cosine of theta, y is equal to 3 sine of theta, and z is just z. I'm just going to let it be z. Okay, so this is the cylindrical coordinates of a um, cylinder. 
Okay, so x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine of theta. Okay, that's just a cylinder of radius three. Okay, um, now I'm only allowing uh, theta go from zero to pi, so it's only gonna give us this half of the cylinder. And then z can go anywhere from zero to four. Okay, so it's like half of a soup can, okay. All right. Um, all right, so in a lot of problems that we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to parameterize the surface, okay? So in certain cases, we're gonna make use of cylindrical coordinates or polar coordinates in a sense, um, and sometimes spherical coordinates will make sense. I wanna show you some other examples as well. So we're gonna parameterize a few surfaces here, okay? So parameterize the plane, uh, 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 6. And we're going to show you there's actually multiple ways to do a plane. But this example is mainly to show you that if you can solve your surface for one variable, and this one you can solve it for any of the variables, but it's easiest to solve it for z because I don't have to divide anything. Okay, so I solve it for z. Then my parameterization. I can just let u equal to the first independent variable, u is equal to x, v is equal to the second independent variable, y, okay? So x is equal to u, y is equal to v, and then z is equal to six minus two x instead of x, I'm using a u, plus three y instead of y, I'm using a v, okay? So this is a parametric form of a plane. Okay, I just solved it for one of the variables and um, let those two independent variables be our two parameters. Okay, all right, now given that, see if you can parameterize the following curve and use the parameters u and v. Okay, so you can pause the video and then parameterize the surface. Okay. So on this one, it's already solved for y, so I'm gonna let x equal to u and z equal to v. And then if I do that, y will be equal to four u squared minus z squared. Instead of z, I'm using a v. So four u squared minus v squared. Okay. All right, now part C. Now, a couple of things are gonna be a little bit different about this one. This one doesn't even have a Z in it, okay? So one thing I can do is just let Z be V, okay? It's not even in this equation. It's gonna to have to have its own parameter for that, but it's not even in there, okay? And now for X and Y, I really can't solve that for x or y because if you try to, you get a plus or minus square root when you went for the, um, to solve it fully for x or for y. But remember, that's just a circle, okay? And circles work best with just polar coordinates. So x is equal to, y is equal to. R, well, that's a fixed radius, two. And I can use the parameter instead of theta, I'll just use u. Okay, so it's kind of an offshoot of polar. So two cosine of u, you could use the parameter of theta if you really like, and y is two sine of u. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more, um, namely actually one more here, and then we'll do some more when we actually do surface integrals. I wanna show you a different way to find uh, the parameterization of a plane. So, um, here we have a plane passing through three points. One, two, three. Okay. Four, five, six. And zero, zero, five. And I'm just putting these just randomly. I'm not sure I plot them exactly on an XY plane. I'm just putting them down so we can see where they are. Okay. All right. Now, if I wanted to do this like I did part A, I need to find the equation of the plane. Now to find the equation of the plane, if you remember, we had these problems way back in, I think chapter 13 or so, we would find this direction vector, u, okay, so going from one point to the other. Well, that direction vector is three 
three, three. Okay, we're going three in each one of the directions. Okay, and we would find another direction vector from one, two, three to this point. Call that V. Okay, and X is going negative one, Y is going negative two, and Z component is moving two units to get from one, two, three to zero, zero, five. All right, now if we find the equation of the plane, we then have to cross these two vectors together to get a normal vector to the plane and then plug it into the formula for a plane. But what I can do instead is just write this as well, x starts at 1, and then I could either move in this direction, 3, 3, 3, u, or I can move in this direction, negative 1, negative 2, 2, actually, it's not a vector, that's a parameter, u, right? Or I can move in this direction, I'll call that v, okay, it's a parameter. Okay, oops, sorry. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, sorry, x can start at one. Okay, x is starting at one and it can move in the direction three u or it can move in the direction minus one v. Just looking at the x component. Okay, y can start at, or starts at two and can move in the direction 3u, or can move in the direction minus 2v. And z can st starts at 3 at this point, and can move in the direction 3u, or plus 2v. Okay. All right, now we can put this in parametric form, like r of uv is equal to 1 plus 3u minus v, 2 plus 3u minus 2v, and 3 plus 3u plus 2v. Okay, so this is a little bit quicker than actually finding the equation and then resolving and do all that stuff. Um, much, much faster to find the equation of a plane this way. Okay, now uh, when we integrate these types of things, we're not going to be looking at infinite surfaces, and a plane is an infinite surface. So, um, what we usually do is we have like extra bounds on our u's and v's. So we say like u is between 0 and 1, and say v is between 0 and 2. Okay, And that way, instead of a infinite plane, I could only go from 1, 2, 3, 1 direct, or 1 unit of u, so I could land to 4, 5, 6. And then I could go twice what it takes me to get to 0, 5, 5. I can go two of those. So it forms like a parallelogram, okay, rather than an infinite plane. Okay, so this is 1v, 2v, 1u. Okay, so it's formed this parallelogram surface here. Okay. All right, so we're going to be looking at more examples of uh, par parameterizing surfaces as we actually do surface integrals. Um, so like I said, this is a pretty long section. Make sure you watch the other parts. Otherwise, you won't even know how to do an integral. Right?